I wasn't dodging you. I wasn't dodging you. Let me make sure I got this mic right. It's not. Now. That's what all the fake insiders were telling me. Dave, you're an idiot. Romani's going to be leaving. Fake, fake insiders, you have your moment. You have your moment. I'm going to give you some props. Today is your day. Crazy, crazy day. Um, and y'all let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments. You know, I got the party music going because I've given a lot of shit to the fake insiders and they need to have their moment. You know who you are. I sent a handful of them some voice messages today saying, hey, even though it was like two months ago, you called it. That's That's just how it is. <laughs> but, man, but man, I being honest, to me, it's just a bummer that this didn't work out because Cormani has the potential to be a really, really damn good cornerback. And I really do hope a change of scenery serves him well. Sometimes that's really what you need. Um, and, and that's okay. So I know that people are going to make, uh, you know, they're going to have some harsh things to say, which... I get it, but I don't understand if, and I don't really know if he left because he was told to leave or if he left uh, on his own, uh, on his own decision-making, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not totally sure, but you know, Bronny James can cover, man. He's a nice three and D guy. He's going to be better in the NBA than he was in college. He's going to be a fine role player. I want to see him go to the heat. Have him return home, feel like, because, well, not home, but go to Miami. He'd fit heat culture really well. But anyways, I'm getting distracted. So, man, I saw this morning, okay? Now, today was a hell of a day for me with work. I just got done. So that's why I'm so late. I tuned into Rawhide's show for just a little bit because he asked me to come on. But uh, I saw that, you know, Cormani tweeted some things. Or I think his mom did. And then it's coming out, you know, that he's expected to leave the portal. I think on three or Hayes Foster, whoever uh, had that announced. And man, you know, it, it really is a bummer because I feel like, again, he's got sky high potential. Um, and of course, things change. I take him for his word. When he came out a month or month and a half, two months ago and said, I'm staying. I believe that. I took him for his word, okay? But um, kind of shortly after that, we stopped seeing him in the videos, which you guys made it clearly known. <laughs> you know, even after that, he said that he's staying. We saw that, uh, again, we didn't see him. So whether it's grades, uh, whether it's something else, I, I hope that uh, wherever he goes, that it is the right change of scenery to him. Um, I don't like to see particularly players or people just with a lot of potential, uh, throw that away. And I would hope that whatever landing spot he's at, it's just a better fit for him. Uh, whatever was going on here, I think, again, when it was like the third or fourth time, I guess, throughout a span where we didn't see him on the field, you know, I'm still an optimist. I still think, okay, he's going to work through this. He's going to get it. But Maybe this just wasn't the environment for him particularly to take those next steps, both on and off the field. Um, and that's and that's always a bummer. You know, like I've said, this isn't going to be everybody's place. Now, man, I, I was really freaking hoping this would be Cormani's place. Um, but that's just not how it is. I know Rico No said, hey, if he's got to get those grades right, I bet he goes to, to Juco. We'll just have to see. Um, but like Cam Newton, uh, well, he left Florida for some different reasons, if I remember correctly, right? It was like a stolen laptop or something like that. But anyways, Cam Newton going to Blinn College, it really ended up uh, serving his career well, you know, uh, was able to go to Auburn and it's one of my favorite college quarterbacks of all time. I mean, he was just incredible. Uh, so man, I was surprised 
part of me is a little bummed, kind of like Rawhide was kind of bummed about the Jaden Milner Jones news yesterday. I think I'm just a little bit more bummed because he's somebody that, again, he's got all the physical tools. Uh, you see what he's put out on tape in high school. A really exciting prospect. But uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes places aren't the right fit. And that's okay. I think for whatever reason or another, the Cormani Colorado thing just wasn't working. Um, so the program gets to move on. He gets to move on. And again, he's kind of more of a shy person. So I wonder if a lot of this attention where every single decision, every single movement he makes is you know, studied under a microscope, um, if that contributed at all to like his his lack of being able to kind of push through these things or us to see some of the growth. Um, I'm not sure, but, you know, I guess sometimes with this tweeting or whatever, you know, it kind of like plays right into it. But I, I my hope and I, I think one of the things that I'm happy about, at least with this, isn't the fact that Cormani's gone. Cormani's a notable loss. This was somebody that I was expecting to have a substantial role on the team this year. Now, will we be able to uh, find uh, suitable, serviceable cornerback depth? Yes. Uh, if there's one position on this team that like, I'm not going to freak out about depth over, it's the cornerback position, right? Um, but where was I going with that? Oh, yeah. One thing that I am so happy about is that we're going to be able to never deal with this question again. Where is Cormani? I was trying to find the meme that Scobuff's meme uh, created. So funny. I was going to plaster that on here, but I couldn't find it. But I definitely need to find it and retweet it out just to bring the whole conclusion uh, about. But, uh, you know, all these people that obsess over this kid in such a strange way, I hope they leave. I hope they leave the fan base. I hope they don't move that, that weird stalker anxiety, uh, you know, energy to another player on the team. Uh, that's really my, my hope because, again, you can argue whether he brought some of that attention on himself with different things that he did, whatever. Um, it just really pisses me off how some people obsessed over this kid. And you can't say – it didn't play a part in which uh, it, it was a positive thing for CU and players. Um, I I don't think so. So the the Cormani weirdos, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I've enjoyed it. You know, <laughs> y'all can go. I think that's what I'm more relieved about. Anything is just the weird people attached to him. Um, and not actually attached to him because he's not friends with them. But the people that obsess over him. They can go now. You can go obsess over him. And I'm serious about it. Cormani, you don't need to put, um, you know, anything crazy on there, but you should open up and only fans know Diddy because you have a lot of, you know, weird people that want to stalk you. Time to make some money off of them. You know, put that business sense into action. Okay. I'm still about that. And you just got to post what you're up to every day, you know? That's all you got to do. Uh, but really, you're not going to find any sour grapes from me. Um, you know, I'm thankful for Cormani's time here as a buff. And again, I wish that it had worked out. Um, but it is what it is. And I think it's better for Cormani. I think it's better for us fans and the program that, you know, everybody gets a fresh start. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to talk about work on here. Yeah, it's so funny, Red Zone, because it's like, it's like the boy who cried wolf. If you're crying wolf every day, every week, eventually you're going to be right. You know, the wolf's going to come, right? So that's just, uh, that's just how it was, you know, but again, I hope a change of scenery does really well. And sometimes, again, um, if you've moved uh, at, at an early age on your own, whether you've gone to college or the military, 
Uh, you know, sometimes moving away from home uh, to a very different culture and environment, it can just be tough. Um, and some people initially, uh, they, they become better for it. And uh, other people can have uh, difficulty with that, you know. Um, and I want to be surprised if, you know, he ends up in Florida or somewhere a little bit closer to home. And maybe that's a better environment for him to take those next steps. Dolores, wonderful comment here. He has a lot of folks cheering for him, but he has to do it for himself. I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to see um, people not reach their potential and and what they can become. And he's got, uh, you know, he's got all the tools. I'm a believer in him. Um, but man, and I don't think it was just classes stuff. Like, like to me, just, I think, I think Vic victory on Twitter, somebody that I follow, he was talking about how, yeah, you know, just like looking back, it's just like the, the, the reciprocation, um, of the, like the vibes, the vibes didn't mesh, you know, I, I think uh, after a while and, yeah, again, I don't think, you know, sometimes, again, I I don't know how some of these young five-star athletes are able to handle so much attention and money uh, all at once. You know, that can be a difficult thing, but uh, sometimes when it's negative attention and uh, where it's also highlighting your mistakes and stuff like that or your shortcomings, that can be a tough thing to deal with. Uh, some people are able to climb themselves out of um, – you know, those situations uh, pretty easily. And sometimes uh, other people aren't. It might take more time. But again, uh, if you haven't uh, benefited ever in, in your life from a change of scenery, um, you probably have somebody close to you that has. And so I'm hoping that uh, this is ultimately this will be a move that really benefits him. And I think I think the team will be relieved to um, just not always have to answer questions. It's not always a topic of conversation, um, in, any of that. Um, again, shout out to Kareem Harden. Shout out to my guy, Kareem Harden. He, I mean, he's seeing this thing through, and uh, that's what I'm excited about, people that are seeing this thing through. But I'm not going to go on here and go crazy and say that this guy's a, a bad apple or a locker room cancer or anything like that. Um, I, I can't do that. I'm not in the locker room. Like, I don't know how it was, you know, there, there are things I guess that you can perceive negatively or positively, but I, I, I think with his teammates, um, I, I think they probably just wish that, that he was out there more and wherever he goes, I'm hoping that he's out there more, but yeah, he's got to do it, do it himself. Uh, no doubt. Cam Duncan said the, yeah, the film was bad. Um, but again, I'm not somebody who's going to go crazy about freshmen, true freshmen struggling in their first year of college football and make like a big time decision on their future based on that. Uh, I, I still believe he's got all the tools. It's just putting together those next things, um, you know, putting it more together professionally. And, you know, it, we've seen kind of the ebb and flow of it, okay? You know, we've seen him crushing it in the weight room. We saw him student of the week. In January, it seemed like he was getting off to a, a really great start. And then that, it was like a, what's the expression? One step forward, two steps back type of thing. Or, you know, one step forward, one step back type of thing, you know. <laughs> um, it, it was always kind of dealing with that back and forth a little bit. And hopefully, wherever he goes, he's able to be more consistent uh, off the field as well as on the field. But uh, again, like any of our true freshmen that that played this past year, uh, I like uh, they get a curve. They get a curve for being a true freshman on the field. Like I'm, I'm sorry. Some people think that that's crazy, and I totally understand that. But that's just how I uh, look at it. Is you're gonna go through your ups and downs uh, with that, just like I'm expecting in a different way. Jordan seemed to go through his ups and downs uh, this year as a true freshman, but I think he'll get it together and um, you know, he'll end up ironing out his game and adjusting just fine. But, you know, I, I also don't think, you know, sometimes 
I didn't really think about this and maybe maybe you guys didn't either, but again, I was so pumped to have Cormani in here in this room with Travis Hunter, obviously, right? But I think that there was also this big expectation on him for him to be Travis Hunter too. Um, and I, I just feel like there were some things that, probably made this transition where where they were whether they were like actually said or not if that makes sense but like you can like feel you know the certain type of expectation and coach prime has big expectations i know that but i feel like there was some added pressure on him to be somebody to be travis hunter he's not travis hunter he's cormani mclean he's gonna go um you know he's gonna take his own journey as we're seeing you know Oh, hey, shout out to my Nuggets. Just renewed my ticket package for um, next year this uh, this morning. And then shout out to my friend Global Utopia. I'm wearing this for him today because we got the Nuggets Lakers series, baby. And it's about time we, uh, we, sleep, we sweep LeBron two years in a row, right? This is going to be great. Yeah, so happy I don't have to see Cormari defense from random <laughs> every YouTube video. Man, you know, uh, yeah, hopefully we don't have that weirdo anxiety-filled energy towards any of our other players. Like, again, regardless of what you thought his uh, behavior was like or if you were frustrated with how, uh, you know, slow some of these things were in terms of how we expected his development to be, um dude, like it was just weird it was just weird nobody deserves that kind of weird weirdness <laughs> yeah man people getting really upset king rich hope you're doing well and here in a minute i'll get in and kind of summarize the other transfer portal news with Colorado because I need to catch myself up as well. <laughs> I've like forgotten everything else. Ar Armand saying, uh, to be honest, I knew Cormani wasn't going to be acceptable to, to the coach prime type of coaching. And I think that's, that's well said. I think a lot of us thought that, you know, he would fall into order, so to speak. And that just didn't happen. Uh, they're very different personalities, you know, and maybe that had uh, something to do with it as well. But again, sometimes when uh, you, you go away from home, uh, you can benefit from it or sometimes you can struggle with it that first time. And uh, that's that's I'm not just talking about football players. I'm just talking about humans in general. We'll see if Florida State's got them. Now, some fake insiders, you know, shout out to the fake insiders. All love today. They were, they were right, <laughs> you know, have your moment, have your victory lap. But there was, there was one that told me a while back that, you know, Cormani is going to leave because, uh, you know, FSU or some other school, you know, they were prepared to offer a million dollars for him to transfer away. Guys, what was it? Like Ohio State's total team is making somewhere, I think, between eight to $10 million total. There is no way in hell with what we saw this past year that Cormani McLean is going to be getting a million dollars from a collective right now. Now, I'm sure wherever he goes, if he stays in uh, Power 4 football, he's going to be getting uh, another check, uh, no doubt. But I think sometimes, you know, if that's what Ohio State is spending, <laughs> I, just, I just don't see somebody that is, you know, it, it is true that he has struggled in the classroom, staying eligible, these different things like that you know he's not going to get that money unless he puts in the puts in the work and and corrects things but he's not getting paid a million dollars out of the portal right now would be my assumption and i don't think a lot of these guys that are in the portal right now or i mean there might be a couple i mean we saw like that five star freshman interior offensive lineman that was an early enrollee for USC uh this year i believe so like Jordan Seaton's class right no, uh, number one interior lineman in the country this past class, enter the portal. 
he might he might get a nice check <laughs> he might get a nice check but outside of some guys like that i don't know if you're gonna see that type of money commanded by the guys in the portal right now but man rest in peace to the weirdos you know it i'm not gonna say i enjoyed it uh, i i enjoyed it once i enjoyed it once when i had the cormani ain't leaving party and you know that was fun Um, I'm not, Dave Cormani has been stopped, been soft. Dave, stop making excuses. No, I'm just, I mean, I'm just talking about people like, like how I make sense of it. And yeah, you, you can definitely say like some of those things, like not going to class or not being prepared. That is soft. You know, it, I'm not saying that's not that I can say like, sometimes when you go to a certain situation, it either helps you. Um, like overcome those things or helps you break bad tendencies or it, it might cause you to uh, you know reinforce those bad habits for whatever reason at the end of the day he's responsible for himself he even though i say we don't come here to play school you at least got to do the minimum amount of work man and he wasn't even doing that uh, that is totally on him and his future is in his hands uh, all i'm saying is that i hope that a change of scenery serves him well bird what's up blessings brother the portal is nonsense making college football a sideshow man this is uh this is really interesting because braha and i have talked about this a little bit and we've seen that college basketball has had for years you know the unlimited instant transfers and you see how it's become pretty much like AAU um, every single season. And I feel like it has watered down uh, the game. Now, I've never been a huge college basketball fan, um, but I definitely have not watched as much of it over the last few years as I have uh, previous to that. And I, I thought there was a good balance with the transfer portal. Like you get that one free instant transfer, and then after that, sit out a year. Um, but... I understand why the courts ruled in those ways. Um, if other students can transfer out, that's uh, and immediately go to class, <laughs> you know, the next semester, uh, you know, it, it makes sense. Like, I understand the argument. Uh, I, I, I wish that there would just be a little bit more. Uh, there needs to be a better structure to the college football offseason because coaches shouldn't be able to leave in the middle of the season either they shouldn't be able to leave before all the bowl games and playoffs are concluded there needs to be some change i think uh, i i think we could benefit from a little bit of stability you know a little bit more stability with there but i mean that's it it is the absolute wild west right now and you can't say you're not entertained at least right He might go to Syracuse. Interesting uh, prediction, man. Syracuse. I mean, that would like that would be like him. That'd be like the Exodus, you know, from the Bible. Man, you're going out into the desert. You know, you're out here in mountainous paradise out here in Boulder, and then you end up in Syracuse, New York. Oh, man, but hey, maybe that's maybe that's what he needs. But again, I I oh, he just followed Nick Williams. Hey, maybe maybe that's. Maybe that's his next destination. But I would imagine that he'd go home to Florida. <laughs> Some of these comments. And that's why they say stars don't matter. Cormani wasn't ready to be starting. Well, I still had him as a starter. But again, I'm just David Talks Buffs. But stars matter because I... I'm not going to get into this argument, but yes, it's a yes and no thing, Armand. You are correct. As Coach has said, here out of shape. Hattie Rawls, it's funny how quick y'all turned on this, man. I mean, I, man, I, I saw some things in the comments. Where they're saying some pretty vile stuff, you know, about this dude, whatever. But um, I, again, like, it, it was something that didn't work out. I want to see him do really well. I'm just bummed that it's not going to happen at, at Colorado. But uh, he's somebody that I still feel like has sky high potential. And um, sometimes it just takes a little longer for things to click with some people more than others. But you got to, 
Like if, if you're the staff, like you can't have preferential treatment um, because then <laughs> that starts creating all sorts of a mess, right? Coach Kev, hey, good to see you, man. It's been a while, so I, I hope you're doing okay. I'll admit, I'm disappointed. I had high hopes for him this season. Getting over it in three, two, one. Okay, I'm good now. Yeah. <laughs> the five star label tarnished. Yeah. Um, I don't know about this, Hattie. They just wait till prime leaves next year using his health as an excuse. Uh, see you on the clock. Um, here's my take on coach prime. I think that this is going to be an interesting year. If he stays on past this next year, I think he at least finishes out his contract here with CU. Um, I, I think if he were to leave after this year, it's, and I don't expect him to, but if he were, I think that it would just be because he wants to like watch the door play on Sundays. And I like, I think that's totally cool. Again, um, for this whole thing, this whole ride with coach prime, like you're never going to find any sour grapes with me for as shorter, uh, for as long or as, or as short as this lasts. Um, he's putting this program in a, in a really good spot, but uh, you know, especially compared to where we were at, but uh, if people think right now that he's going to off of like an eight win season, get offered an sec job or something like that, I just don't think that's that's going to happen. Um, and this has been something that I've talked about a little bit before, is that Prime has his strategy. He has his way of going about things. Um, sometimes I wish that he... <laughs> sometimes I wish um, that he would just come out and say it. Like, this is my strategy. This is how I'm going to do it. Like it or love it. It is what it is. Instead of just kind of making some excuses that I've called like BS on before but that's another conversation um i think if we are to win enough games to at least get to a bowl game this validates his strategy of you know how he wants to recruit which i'm cool with again um i'm cool with right now but um i just don't see a school like florida paying him nine ten million dollars for him not to do in-home visits <laughs> you know that's and that's just like one of the things then you got to factor in like all the other stuff like we're cool with all the cameras the well-off media uh you know him doing all the pr stuff you know that that's part of a it's like a joint job description because he's always wearing cu stuff when he's out there but it's an unconventional way of promoting the program and recruiting very very different with recruiting. Um, this is not common and that's okay. Um, but that's why it's hard for me to see him leaving, um, for the reasons of getting another job. This is why I've always felt like Colorado was a great place for him because we would give him that freedom to spend his time the way that he wants to. Um, for him to strategize and implement that to his um, to his desire. There are a lot of schools and other boosters um, that would not be okay with this, that would not be okay with it. And so that's why it's like, I that if he wants to continue to coach, I think he can keep um, doing what he's doing uh, here. You know, I don't think that there would be many schools that would be okay with with for instance the recruiting stuff and the cameras um unless we see colorado in the national championship at some point or making a national championship run and it's really put enough proof of concept out there for other schools to um you know not be hung up on but then you might as well argue well if you've made colorado into a national power why leave you know so that's just my thoughts on it. But I uh, I appreciate uh, your thoughts as well, Hattie. Uh, kind of weird energy, but, you know, 
hey, no, no sour grapes from me. <laughs> no sour grapes from me. You know, this is all just fun. This is all just fun. Hey, Jason, what's going on, man? Hey, Jason, uh, let me text you right now. Hopefully we can do a show on Thursday. So um, let, let's be sure to do that um on thursday if you got time hit me back but y'all go follow jason he's a member of the channel oklahoma fan but covers all college football as well and the first youtuber to ever reach out to me when i started this channel like last february so uh much love to jason always always love talking with him uh but hey enough of the cormani talk let's go ahead and take a look at what else has happened with colorado on the transfer portal this year or, or, or today. Got to catch up on today. Okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen. I can give you my thoughts. And guys, let me know. Let me know. Uh, guys that you feel like we got we, we might be targeting or talking to, let me know. I got, I got a good feeling about a few of these guys that have entered the portal. Uh, but let's go ahead and go through it, you see. Hey, th and look. Wow, they gave him a uh, a four star transfer rating. Guess that normally happens with the five stars when they make their first transfer. I think Savell Smalls, he was a four star, right, coming out here. I'm trying to remember. Um, but was that the only other buff that we had today? We had, of course, Jada last night. Jacob Page. That's right. This was a player that I thought might enter the portal. Uh, I, I think, obviously, a talented wide receiver. I think he's definitely a Division One football player. I mean, he's got a 6'3 size. He's got some nice speed to him. But I just – it was hard for me to see some of these guys that were brought in last year's freshmen from the wide receiver uh, position standpoint really having a, a chance to, to play <laughs> in, the, in the long run. I mean, we're also bringing in Cam McKell and Draylon Miller, and you saw that we've already offered or uh, that that Penn State wide receiver who's who's really, really good as well. So I, I think cornerback and wide receiver, those are always going to be positions that we're going to be able to fill out pretty quickly um, and pretty easily in terms of uh, getting talent there. But outside of that, um, you know, that's that's different. You know, those positions are our wheelhouse. And best of luck to Jacob Page. Um Wish I could have seen him get on the field, but uh, I I wish we had you know some spring preseason games or some summer preseason games because I would really like to see like what these guys can do after redshirting, whatever. Uh, C.J. West is a guy that has been brought to my attention of uh, somebody that we should keep our eyes on here. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up my bookmark because I had his profile bookmarked here and we can so kent state guy but hey don't be triggered don't be triggered by kent state okay uh this is a player that i think like i have said i think can come in and add rotational depth uh look at this is like maybe our uh, possible uh replacement for somebody like Chaz wallace who i feel like could be uh, more productive and better. I mean, look, bigger size, 6'2", 315, and uh, graded out really well. Um, of course, G5, but you want to, so you want to take this with a grain of salt a little bit, but if you're a really good player, you should be uh, grading out with these types of grades at that level. 84.5 with the run defense. Love it, okay? So uh, defensive interior, maybe he can play um, You know, some of the three technique as well. Looks like he can. And, yeah, I, I, I would love for Colorado to go after him. I think that would be great. Almost 40 tackles on the year total. He had seven quarterback hits, 14 pressures, and two sacks. So the fact that you're getting a little bit of pass rush as well uh, from the defensive interior is also great. Uh, we got to bring in some defensive interior guys because we don't want to kick Shane Cokes back inside now. Come on. Let him play his more natural end position. Um, let's see if there was anybody else. Maybe you guys got some names for me to check out. I'll check the comments here, and then I'll wrap up here in maybe 10 minutes or so. 
Gearhead, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Says, now that the scholarship slots opened up, hopefully we don't spend a single spot on another receiver. Well, just wait. Uh, should be all about size and strength. More offensive tackles for the offensive line. More size at inside linebacker. Wonderfully said, though, Gearhead. I would agree with you. Um, I don't think we need 15 wide receivers on the team. And it would be nice to have more of a pipeline with that offensive line, with the defensive line, a little bit more linebacker linebacker depth in there. It is what it is. Um, let's go ahead and look at the scholarship chart, too. All right. Hey. What's up, Llama? Okay. So now we're down to 74. Okay. And we'll see, you know, if uh, Isaiah Harge, Adam Hopkins stick around. I imagine with uh, Cormani leaving, they got to be feeling uh, possibly a little bit better about where they're at uh, on the depth chart and with their potential to uh, get some snaps this year. So, uh, we'll see if they stick around. They've been uh, Adam Hopkins has been somebody that I've just kind of had my eye on, as well as uh, Assad Wasim. This is a guy that I was uh, really pumped about to see kick return. Uh, but as you know, Zay Weaver, Jimmy Horn, Dylan Edwards, they were taking care of that uh, last year. And um, so maybe he's a guy that might hit the portal as well. Um, but outside of that, I mean, we I think – We'll just have to see. Right now, there's nobody else that I would be, you know, quote unquote, expecting to hit the portal outside of those guys that I've talked about. And I guess I'll say to Ryan Staub, if he is offered a, a, a quick path to playing time at another school, most likely probably a G5 school. Um, I know that I think Neely said that he's our number two quarterback right now. But man, it's just hard to pass up six, seven, two fifty, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay but yeah let's see we got six defensive linemen gearhead 10 offensive linemen we're at 10 wide receivers now okay we're at 10 wide receivers now but uh travis hunter doesn't count towards that so maybe it's uh it's 11 now so interesting not as many as i thought either now that this is all added up but you can see we might lose a handful of offensive line talent next year. We'll see if somebody like Tyler Brown has multiple years or not, just like Kareem Harn does, listed as a senior, has a COVID year. Uh, Shador, uh, if he wants to stick around another year, he can do that, I guess, uh, after this season, if he wants to exercise that, that COVID waiver, if he wants. We'll just have to see. Uh, but right now, defensive linemen, yeah, we need to we need to increase this amount right here. We got six guys. Um, and I mean, BJ Green, he's more of an edge though, right? I mean, BJ Green's not going to be playing any three tech, right? Right? Same with Shane Cokes, right? I mean, you don't want them playing defensive interior. I've seen Quincy Wiggins kind of all over the place as well. So we'll have to see about that. But in terms of linebackers, I feel a little bit better about our linebackers if Keaton Wade's playing a little bit inside throughout the year. Um, maybe we keep another eye on Jeremiah Brown or Brandon Gant. Those are other guys, too, that I've uh, kind of wondered about, as well as Travis J. Is Travis J playing any linebacker at all? Have you guys noticed? No, he's kind of like a hybrid player. So we'll just have to see. But I, I like the fact that we got 10 spots, 11 spots open. Let me go to the team view here. And I think my prediction was like five to 10 guys enter the portal. So I think we're probably around that 10 mark. School. There we go. I promise I can read. Okay. So we've had one, two um but i mean those guys were gone after the winter so i'll just count the guys that have left like right now so one two three oh yeah that's right david connor's out of here man uh 
again, um, I hope he's doing okay. Um, dealing with uh, the death of his friend or family member, brother. I can't remember. Um, I wonder if he plays football anywhere this year, but I hope he's able to return to playing football. I imagine though, um, that yeah, if he wasn't going to come back, we will be getting some more guys on the offensive line, you know? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Cause DV Harris, I don't think he was on the spring roster this year. Zach Blackwood, I mean, he I don't even think he made it to campus last summer. Uh Tarverish Dawson was gone in the fall or at the end of the fall as well. So yeah, we got eight guys, which is kind of around expectation. Again, we'll see who else enters the portal. There might be a couple more stragglers or so, but uh I would assume that Monday and Tuesday is gonna be the majority of guys, right? Zach Blackwood, he was a guy, I think he might have been a JUCO guy that transferred here and then, yeah, Garden City, but he never he never made it on campus for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, actually, was he on campus last spring? Maybe you guys can help refresh my memory. But again, I think that this is expected, this amount right now. So, yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. And Brian, I, I, I think sadly, you know, I think that this is the case not only for uh, Buffs, but uh, you know, other players as well. You know, a guy that I was really pumped to have here, uh, just as a developing quarterback, Case and Wiseman uh, entered the portal and a three-star guy last year, and again, somebody that was just going to take some time uh, developing. And we saw him enter the portal after the season ended this fall. And um, going through a second cycle right now, no offers. So um, at least that I've seen. So uh, hopefully some of these guys, they're able to find other spots. But yeah, sometimes like, again, when you're the cream of the crop, you know, type of talent, you know, Cormani McLean, he's going to get another chance, you know, no doubt. Uh, but that, I think that sometimes, you know, they can fool themselves into thinking sometimes the grass is greener on the other side. That isn't always the case. And sometimes it might just be worth sticking around uh, for a year, taking another development year, and then having that ability to play uh, the, the next year. But this is starting to feel a little bit like AAU. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to have to see how it goes. I was talking to a friend of mine um, this morning, and he was saying that I think um, he's like, I think that we're probably three to four years out away from there being a little bit more con uh, contract type feel with some of this stuff. That's just his opinion. I'm not really sure. Hey, Hattie, be nice. You you have no reason to be upset. You guys have moved on. You guys have moved on. You got no reason to be all mad. It's all good vibes over here. So let's see. Yeah, we got Wicked Broncos Productions talking here man y'all are y'all are rowdy today <laughs> again who the hell is oh zach blackwood shambly yes we are bringing in shambly again apologies to shambly i'm sorry when i first just read your stat line and said that you played like ass last year which i mean you were ass when you gave up those sacks probably but all sec uh freshmen and highly highly touted I'm sorry that I said those things. I sure as hell want you here. No doubt. No doubt. Bring some depth to this offensive line. I think that he could probably immediately uh, compete with 
Khalil Benson for that starting right tackle spot. And might I say then that would give us the luxury of kicking Khalil Benson into one of those starting guard positions. Again, I know he played tackle at Indiana, but I just got this feeling that he might just turn out to be a better guard than he would tackle. And that's kind of been my whole argument this this whole time is uh, he can play tackle, but I don't know if that's where he can reach his highest ceiling. Now, I know we got um, Tyler Johnson, which we haven't really seen him on the field. Maybe it's injury or something like that. Or maybe he's just practicing with like the second team. Y'all let me know. And then we got uh, Jamal Mayers, uh, who's coming up from G5, coming up from UTEP. Um, yeah, I would like, I don't know. I feel like all those guys might be kind of around the same when it comes to their talent for a guard, but I mean, Khalil Benson's played with that nasty, you know, there's a, there's a reason why I tried to get the name like from Tyler Hansbro, you know, psycho T to sick to stick with uh, Khalil Benson calling it, uh, calling him psycho B, but it just doesn't seem like it, it, it transferred, you know, maybe, maybe these kids don't remember Tyler Hansbro, but you know, he brought it, he brought the energy. Uh, for for UNC you know I kind of like Psycho B <laughs> let Danny Cannell have his moment it's okay all right y'all okay oh hey I saw a comment about McIntyre Uh, the coach's sons, even our players. Yes, that's very true. This is not the first time that we've seen, uh, you know, brothers on the same team. Coaches bring their kids to play quarterback on the team. But this one, it actually made sense. So, yeah, man. But shout out to Mike McIntyre, all these guys. Anyways, guys, I'm going to shut this thing down. Again, apologies that it took me all day to get on here. Uh, but really appreciate everybody in here. I mean, 380 people is just absolutely insane. Um, but, you know, biggest takeaways here is uh, we got two, I, I think right now, uh, maybe two and a half. Uh, you know, we all kind of consider Savion Washington to to be gone for a week or so. But kind of two surprises, I would say, with uh, Jaden Miller-Jones and Cormani McLean leaving. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, the team goes about replacing them. And, uh, yeah, again, guys, this is college football. Let's have fun with it. Um, have fun when you're right. Have fun when you're wrong. And, uh, you know, that's why I got to eat my crow from the fake insiders. Y'all are the goats. I appreciate you guys as always. Sco Buffs. <laughs>